Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to stake the Ethereum that you have stored using your Ledger device right within Ledger Live using a third party app called Lido. So let's get started. All right, so I'm here on the blog page article on the Ledger website about the new Ethereum staking feature that's uh, added to Ledger Live. Now we're using a third-party app called Lido, which is providing liquidity for us. And we'll be able to stake the Ethereum that we have stored in our Ledger Nano-based wallets uh, right within Ledger Live. So it's pretty cool. Now there are a number of considerations that you should be aware of. So I invite you to read this article carefully. This article here just kind of gives you a brief overview of uh, what staking uh, with Lido is all about and how you do it within your ledger. So I'll walk you through all that. But basically to stake Ethereum uh, in anticipation of the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade, normally you would need to deposit 32 ETH in a smart contract and leave it in there until Ethereum 2.0 comes out and the smart contract expires. So that's a lot of Ethereum to uh, put aside and not have any access to at all. So there is a third party solution uh, provided by Lido where they are basically staking the Ethereum themselves, but they'll allow you to stake your Ethereum in a liquid form. So the barriers to entry have been lowered quite a bit. You don't have to stake 32 Ethereum. You can stake uh, as little or as much as you want. So uh, let me just uh, go into Ledger Live and show you how this works. And then uh, from there, I'll uh, show you where you can read about uh, some of the risks that are involved in this. All right, now in order to do this, you're going to need to have your device connected and your PIN entered so that you can authorize these transactions, All right? So, and of course, you're definitely gonna to need to have some Ethereum in one of your Ethereum accounts. So if you haven't done that, then I would uh, check out some of my earlier videos. I have a great setup video, which I'll put a link to up there in the corner on how you get Ledger Live set up so that you can get started storing your cryptocurrency using uh, Ledger Live and a Ledger device, all right? So in a Ledger device, the private keys are stored on the device. The cryptocurrency is on the blockchain, the public blockchains of the different cryptocurrencies that you're using. And this little device uh, allows you to access those cryptocurrency addresses, right? These are like the keys to your car. Right? or the keys to your safe deposit box down at the post office, if you want to think of a blockchain like that. All right, so here we go. Uh, I've got my Ethereum account ready. Now, notice also that I have uh, a few different Ethereum accounts. Uh, this will come into play a little bit when we get into Lido, so I'll show you how that's going to work. Uh, you'll notice there that uh, I've got about 0.73 Ethereum in this uh, particular account. So that's the account that I'm going to use. Uh, we'll start off small. We'll just uh, do about 0.5 Ethereum. So let's go over here to Discover. And there are a lot of third-party apps built into Ledger Live that you can use to uh, access additional features. So we're going to go into Lido here. We'll hit Continue. They're reminding us that this is an external application. And then here is where we can stake uh, our Ethereum. Notice there that they've got the balance that I was interested in. All right, you may have multiple Ethereum accounts. You can switch them up here. So if you notice up here, I can switch between the different Ethereum accounts that I have in Ledger Live, depending on which one has the Ethereum that I want to stake. In this case, uh, the top one was there already. So that's the one we're into. All right. Before we get started, I would like you to scroll down a little bit and check this out. Uh, this is a more detailed explanation of how Lido works and what some of the risks are involved in staking. They're not high risks, but there are some risks that are involved. So they explain what liquid staking is. In other words, they're sort of staking on your behalf and providing you with immediate liquidity. All right. 
And then they're going to exchange your Ethereum for ST Ethereum, which is kind of a placeholder token that you can uh, that will go into your wallet. And you can even uh, trade this token if you want to. All right, and then this is the section that I'd like you to carefully look at. Uh, how secure is Lido? These are some advantages here because Lido is an open source software. Uh, all the code is reviewable. It's out there. It's a non-custodial staking service. You're not uh, depositing crypto in uh, a centralized exchange like you would uh, with other platforms where you're actually uh, basically lending your crypto to these other platforms. This is smart contract based non-custodial staking. So those are all the pluses. Right. And then they explain to you about the uh, regular stake, the self staking and the liquid staking. The self staking is where you you have to put up 32 Ethereum, which is uh, quite a barrier for most people. So the liquid staking, you can stake as little or as much as you want. And then the risks here. It, since it's a smart contract, there are risks that there might be uh, bugs or leaks in the smart contract. All right, that's always a risk with any kind of software. Uh, it is built on Ethereum 2.0, which may have its own errors. It's also built on the assumption that uh, Ethereum 2.0 will be adopted, which is not a given, but it's pretty likely. All right, and then here's kind of the, the crux of the biscuit that I'd like to tell you about. They're staking this on your behalf across multiple validators. When you deposit your Ethereum in this smart contract, they're not just going to take it all and put it with one validator, right? They're going to spread it across multiple validators to minimize your risks. And what are the risks of a validator? Well, uh, the system of staking has a built-in feature to discourage bad actors. So uh, you might have a validator that is a bad actor and they would suffer something called slashing, which means if their account is not uh, up to snuff, their account could get slashed and you could lose whatever you have staked with that particular validator. Now this is very rare, but this is the way the system is built to encourage people not to be bad actors, right? It sort of penalizes the bad actors. So it's built into the system, but there is a small risk of one of the validators that they have placed your Ethereum with uh, to get slashed, right? So I just want you to be aware of all of these risks, very minor minimum risks, but you should be aware of this kind of stuff before you jump in to staking, all right? But of all the staking out there, this is one of the easiest and most convenient and liquid ways to do it. So let me show you how it works. Now, uh, I could uh, put the max Ethereum into this, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to get started with uh, 0.5 Ethereum. Uh, and also, you should leave, always leave a little bit of Ethereum in your wallet because Ethereum uh, or Ether is the juice that runs the Ethereum wallet. You use it for transaction fees and trading fees on third-party platforms and that sort of thing. So you, you don't want to max out your Ethereum. You don't want your Ethereum balance to go to zero. You should always have a little bit of Ethereum in there to cover fees, transfer fees, and trading fees, and staking fees. All right, so let's go with 0.5 Ethereum. We'll hit Submit. Now get ready because we're going to need to validate this on our device. So you want to keep an eye on your device while all this is going on. All right, I'm going to show you what my device looks like here. We'll hit submit. All right, there's an overview of what we're doing. Now notice the Ethereum fees are pretty high on this. So you'll want to figure that into any of the calculations of the profits that you'll be earning down the road. Uh, you'll want to take this into account. Ethereum Fees are high on the Ethereum network. This has nothing to do with Ledger. This is simply a fact of life on the Ethereum blockchain. And uh, notice they put a custom fee for me, which is uh, relatively uh, small. I'll go ahead and accept that. That's the default. But you could uh, increase or decrease your fees. I wouldn't recommend uh, going with the low fees because your transaction will take a long time and it can be pretty gut-wrenching while you're waiting for something to go through. So I would stick with the defaults here. All right, let's hit continue. 
oh, okay, it's asking me to open Ledger Manager, so I'll allow that. Oh, okay, so it's installing the Lido app for me. Uh, it's kind of doing it on the fly. I could have gone over to the manager and done this first, but uh, they're just doing it for me, which is fine. So now that I have this new app on my device, I'll hit both buttons to open it up. All right, and there's the overview of what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna be staking 0 0.05 ETH, and there's the uh, fee that I'm gonna pay. So I need to review this transaction on the device. So I'm gonna use the metal button here to move over and just review everything, make sure it's correct. All right, there's our uh, fees, and then we'll hit accept and send. All right, and now it says that I'm staking uh, 0.5 ETH and I'll be receiving a 0 0.5 ST ETH. All right, so we can click on this link here to view this transaction over on Etherscan. All right, and you can see that it's still pending. We're still waiting. So it might take between five and 10 minutes. So if you had uh, chosen a very low fee, this would have taken longer. So like I said, uh, when you're waiting for something that has value, like uh, cryptocurrency, uh, the shorter the wait time, the better, right? So that's why I accepted the uh, suggested uh, fee. All right, and it looks like it uh, completed there. So let's uh, check one more time on Etherscan. You can see that that was successful, all right? So the transaction went through, and now I have a balance of ST Ethereum, all right? So we can dismiss this. And now you can see that I have a 0.5 ST Ethereum in my account. All right, and you might be wondering uh, how much will I make? So the current APR is shown here. There are some conditions attached to that. Basically, this kind of depends on uh, the staking network in general. These staking rewards could go up. But do keep in mind that uh, there is a fee associated that Lido will take from your rewards of 10%. So that affects this APR a little bit here. It would be higher if they weren't doing that. But that's uh, part of the system and the way it's built. Now, you may also be wondering, oh, well, uh, can I move, uh, can I uh, convert my uh, ST ETH back to ETH if I want my ETH back? And the answer to that is not really, not in this interface. You can click this link here to get a more detailed description of how Lido works. But basically your SETH is going to stay SETH until uh, the Ethereum 2.0 phase 1.5 or phase two, right? So uh, approximately 18 months before you can actually claim regular ETH back for your ST ETH, all right? So that's a long term, right, to, to, to convert back to regular Ethereum. But in the meantime, what's going to happen is uh, you'll notice if you go over to your accounts and then go to the Ethereum account, you'll see there's less Ethereum in there now because it's being staked, right? So that Ethereum is no longer part of my Ethereum balance. But you'll also notice that you have STETH down here as an ERC-20 token. Now, this token can be traded on exchanges if you want to cash out right away, right? If you want your to get your money back out, right? So you're not locked into this. You can always sell your STETH. And this balance here of STETH will grow as you receive staking rewards. So if you were to take this out and transfer over to another exchange and sell it all, uh, you would start to accumulate small balance as you go from the Ethereum that you have staked, right? So you can realize your gains right away, or you can simply leave them in there uh, for a year or so until it's time to uh, convert back to regular ETH. But in the meantime, you'll watch your ST ETH balance growing as you're receiving uh, rewards. And then you can also go in here to Lido and check what the current APR is. That APR might go higher 
or, or lower. You know, it might fluctuate a little bit. But that's how this works. This STETH is your new liquid asset that you've received for the ETH that you're staking. And I'm also assuming that if you take your STETH and sell it all, then you won't have anything left to redeem your regular Ethereum back when it comes time for ETH 2.0. But that's because you chose to liquidate what you had. That's the whole idea of liquid staking, is that you can uh, cash out at any time by simply selling your STETH tokens. Or you can leave them in there and watch them grow. That's entirely up to you. So the actual staking didn't take very long. I spent most of the time explaining to you how it works and uh, the risks that were involved and uh, the conditions on your returns and how STETH works. But uh, pretty simple, but you want to go into it knowing what you're doing and also to realize that you're uh, not going to be able to get your ETH right back out, right? You're not going to be able to convert back to Ethereum until about uh, a year to 18 months, right? But you've got your STETH, which uh, is uh, pegged to the price of Ethereum. So you've got your, uh, your value is liquid, all right? But it's just in STETH now rather than Ethereum. All right. So if there's any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.